Edward here from ERViewer.com. I have another video for you. This is another example of what I'm most interested in, uh, my exploration with this process that we call remote viewing um, and the things that fascinate me the most, which are, as Ingo Swan terms, uh, the second reality, the ESP core, the nucleus, interacting with this uh, second reality, uh, interpenetration. Uh, are we dealing with uh, some type of holographic light spectrum that exists uh, in this second reality where all these points in time and space uh, simultaneously exist in this quantum field? These are the things that interest me the most. Um, and if that is the case, how does it relate to remote viewing? Well, is this how we receive or have access to um, quote-unquote information uh, with quote-unquote targets that we can describe? accurately over and over again uh, there's no doubt in my mind or this doesn't the doubt is over we can do these things now it's it's a matter of how um, Ingo Swan talked about um, some work that he did with a scientist a neuroscientist out of Canada by the name of Dr. Michael Persinger and what Dr. Persinger was looking at is uh, the specific cells in, in the body that cover the nervous system, they cover the brain, they're called glial cells. Uh, he was postulating, and I'm not sure if they proved it or not, but postulating uh, that, th that as these inputs are acquired uh, or this interpenetration takes place, that it may infuse itself within these glial cells. The glial cells there's many different types of them, but they, they cover the nervous system, the central nervous system. Uh, they also uh, work in the brain. They surround the neurons and hold them in place. They supply uh, the neurons with nutrients and oxygen. So they, they're kind of a, a sort of delivery system of sorts. Um, and if that is the case, that these inputs uh, infuse themselves within these glial cells, um, that may be how we suddenly find ourselves experiencing these uh, aspects of the second reality. Uh, this, uh, that's my goal is to experience that um, and document it on video. That's what I want to do and show what is taking place when, this, when these types of experiences uh, happen. Uh, the target for this session, again, I'm blind to all these targets. I get them from an online database. Uh, my, my intention is to not only describe some remote location, but experience the location itself. That if these inputs from the second reality, this point in time and space, or this target, um, interpenetrates with the glial cells, and we suddenly begin to experience this this point in time and space, uh, my what I'm interested in is experiencing the entire aspect of it meaning that if these inputs interpenetrate the glial cells, I should experience the actual quote-unquote target itself. And that's, that's and, and I get, you know, the targets that I get online, they're safe targets. I don't want a Charles Manson or some freaky thing. I want ones that I don't have to be too concerned about um, allowing these inputs to interpenetrate with, with my system, with, with my own glial cells, and then move through the core uh, where, where they get subjected to the mental processes. Uh, the target was uh, the Sh Champagne Pool, a, a geothermal pool in, um, in New Zealand. And what was interesting, what's interesting about this pool is that there, there are a lot of mineralization, uh, um, different types of, of metals, alloys that create like this kind of rust barrier around, uh, you know, around the edge of this um, of this thermal pool, which this gives it this kind of rust color discoloration, which is what I was experiencing. And what was interesting about the experience of feeling these these inputs interpenetrating my glial cells uh, was experiencing the feeling of 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 these substances uh, around me as if I was part of the the environment. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. That's the, that's the experience that I'm looking for. And I did feel it in, in this one. That's why it's important to me uh, to document it, to experience it, in that um, I want to understand how this works and I want to understand where it's coming from. 
I don't know if I'll ever know where it's coming from, but if we can understand that these inputs do interpenetrate with our, our own specific types of cells, these glial cells, it would give us an indicator of how our own body reacts to it, our own nervous system reacts to it, um, how these, these cells um, are being infused or uh, infused or ignited or lightened up with, the, with these inputs um, as they surround the neurons and the connective tissues around the neurons of the brain. Um, is that where these, these things begin to ignite in the brain and then they are moved with, through our own mental processes that then begin to do all their processes and change them and all these types of things and then some end result comes above the threshold of our awareness. Um, that's what I'm studying, that's what I'm exploring, that's what I'm experiment, uh, experimenting with and documenting and documenting and documenting on film. Um, this is my main interest, my main goal, uh, my life's work with this activity called we call remote viewing is to experience these things. Um, so I hope you find this as interesting as I do and many more to come. Five, six, seven, one. Round, flat, large, windy, echoes, sounds, sounds. I put that here. Sounds, that's something I'm going to look at later. Edged. Angular, and I'm getting like this kind of like a frame. That's a that's kind of a faint image of. Well, there's an idea with the shape form. <clears throat> this is more of an idea. The idea of a frame, metallic. Getting, again, this idea of rusty, it's more like an idea than, than a feeling, but a kind of rough texture, rough coarse, rough and coarse. I feel like it's like sandy or grainy. Sandy or grainy is <coughs> rough, kind of. Course, course, course. I feel like I'm surrounded in this kind of coarse graininess. Getting these um, memory comparisons here. Let me put these here. Memory comparison. I don't like to put that there. Um, memory comparisons of like quicksand. <clears throat> that kind of thing. I feel like I'm surrounded by something. Surrounded by like a coarse graininess. Like a coarse graininess. Minus six and a Looping. Edged. Bright. Outside. feel like something is surrounding or coating me, coating, coating me, you know, like, uh, um, put it up here, it's 
sand, water, dirt, that kind of thing. Like I'm in clothes, encapsulated, surrounded. Kind of thing. That's just a feel. This feeling that I'm experiencing. Okay, heavy heaviness, like a, like a coat. Like a coat. Like I'm wearing like a. Heavy coat, like a heavy coat. You know, and it feels like a damp, like damp. You know? That's my, that's how it feels to me. surrounds. <clears throat> five, six, seven. Five, six, seven. Looping. Looping is typically my indicator of people. A people indicator. What about this frame thing though? Or this frame-ish shape? Dingy. That could be just um, either. It could be creative addition. I feel the. I feel the input. I can feel the input. I can feel the processes that are doing all of these things to it. Getting these memory comparisons here, like uh, winter coats, that kind of thing. Uh, I don't know. That's that's a, 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 a specific memory coming in my mind. That kind of thing.
Is it an actual coat? <clears throat> or is it a coating? Coating something? Coating something? A coat over something? A coat. My experience right now is I feel like I, and this is, this will be, if these inputs are correct, then these, the glial cells must be carrying these things. I feel like I have a coat, a coating on me, something coating on me, coated with something. Hopefully these are unimpeded. Frame. Uh, sure. Didn't really go into that too much. 